do we really need yet another YouTube photography channel? Probably not, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. Like most of you, with a camera, when we go out with family, with friends for walks, we want to photograph the things that we see, catch our eye as we go. But it's always a problem that those who don't have a camera are getting patient and we don't get much time. So we don't have the time to think about what we're doing. And that's what this channel is about, about the thinking behind each shot. Pre-planning, better understanding of a camera, and we can do so much more. So, anyway, I'm not a professional. You won't catch me getting up at half past three in the morning, heading off to climb a mountain in the dark for that one killer shot. No. Me, I ramble about and... Uh, Take the photographs where I can. So anyway, this is my first attempt at one of these uh, videos and uh, unusually I was on my own and unusually I carried a pack and a tripod, something I don't normally do. So that's enough waffling from me. Cue the video. So Welcome to Butterdean Wood, a few miles outside Edinburgh on the road south. It's been a gorgeous morning so far, with very bright harsh sunlight. So I thought we should come to Woodland, where we'll get nice contrasts of nice shafts of sunlight and dark shadows between the trees. I'm going to be changing my apertures and focal lengths to change the depth of focus and see how that affects an image. So, I think I found my first composition. Here with sunlight drifting through, catching some of the trunks. The camera is set on its base ISO, which for this one's 160. I'm setting it to f4 so we get reasonable depth of focus, and it's set to 16 millimeters to get full wide angle. So at a two second timer that will make sure there's no camera shake. So here we go. And the shot's taken. Pretty much what I expected and wanted, so well pleased with that one. Okay, I think there's another possible shot here. So we've had a slight change here. I switch lenses to my widest angle, which is 10 millimeters. The camera is now pointing straight up, and we have the trees, the clouds, and a little bit of blue sky up there. So, 10 millimeters. The f-stop won't quite a lot of... Oops, we have these switches to be a pain. We'll stop down quite a bit to get f8, 500th of a second. But we're going to overexpose a little bit by a whole stop to stop those trees getting too dark. Overexposing I'm doing the cheap one using the exposure compensation dial. The shorter the focal length of a lens, then the greater the depth of focus you get at any given aperture. So this one, great depth of focus. 
Anyway, I switched back to my my longer lens, and as should the, the wider aperture f28, I can now focus on these close things and the background has now gone out of focus. So we're at f2.8 the shutter speed is at 40 the ISO at 160. Now that extra stop has now allowed the background to be completely out of focus. Just widen that. When I change to 16 millimeters, we have less blur in the background. At 55, it's almost completely out of focus. When we get back and look at these in the computer, the difference in depth of focus as uh, defined by focal length and aperture will become very obvious. Blurry in the background makes your subject stand out from its background. should be pretty obvious from these two images. The longer the focal length, the more blur you get at the same aperture. For me, the first image was far better because you can see so clearly the subject. So I found another composition. Sunlight is hitting some leaves with fairly dark background and it's just catching the edge of a tree there. So switch metering. F11, no I don't think so, I think we'll keep this quite white, and we'll just catch the tree with the, the light at the bottom, I'm going to take this quickly before the sun goes, with a bit of luck the background's out of focus, so that will make the bright leaves stand out. So camera to subject and subject to background distance these make a difference and here it's just not worked as planned. So to illustrate this depth of focus even further what I've done is I've switched to my longest lens that I brought with me. It's 50 to 140. Now, it I've also got it to 2.8 and I focused on the tree. With a longer lens, then a huge difference in aperture, we really can see a difference in how the background looks. Not sure which I prefer, um, probably the second one, but let me know what you think in the comments. On my way back I spotted this and to my mind there's no doubt that the image with the trees and the leaves in focus is far better, far more pleasing, but let me know what you think in the comments. So I've found something that's probably too good to miss. A wall covered in moss and with bits of sunlight catching it. So I think that's worth the shot. Um, I'm back on the standard lens that's and the camera's just hung around my neck, no tripod. I'm going to focus on the bits that are 
most in focus. I'm not going to give any exposure compensation. And click. The dark areas are very dark, the bright areas are looking. With a wide angle lens, we don't need to stop down too much. Uh, F28's fine, and everything's in focus here. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed that, my rambling in the woods, and also my rambling aloud as I thought my way through the woods. So if you enjoyed it, uh, hit the subscribe button, there'll be more of the same coming, maybe in a week, it might take me a fortnight, depends on how much time I can find. But thank you very much, and uh, see you again soon.